Now at five, a man is behind bars and a death investigation is underway in Petal. We'll tell you what we've learned today just ahead. Plus, it's the most magical time of the year and Forest General Spirit Girls is hoping to make prom season a little easier on the pockets. A look at Palooza coming up. The sunshine is here. We've got a bright and buttery start for your work week. I've got your full forecast coming up. Your news at five starts now. This evening, WDAM7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM7 News at 5. One woman is dead and one man is booked in the Forest County Jail this evening charged with murder. Good evening. Thanks for joining us at WDAM at 5. I'm Trey Howard. The Forest County Jail docket shows 35-year-old Tobias Smith was booked into Forest County Jail around 8 this morning in connection with a deadly shooting in Petal. The Petal Police Chief Matthew Hyatt says a 21-year-old woman was shot and killed early this morning in the 200 block of West 4th Avenue. The victim has been identified as, as, as Ed Lauren Bayless of Silver Creek. Officials have not released any information about what led up to the shooting or any possible motives. We will keep you updated on our broadcast and on our website as we learn more information. On Saturday, the Waynesboro Police Department arrested former Wayne County Sheriff Jody Ashley on charges of DUI and reckless driving. He has since been released from the Wayne County Jail. Ashley served two terms as sheriff in Wayne County from 2015 to 2023. Now over to our first alert weather team. Nick is back to blue skies around the Pine Belt. What's the rest of the week looking like? You know, it's nice to see the blue skies. That's for sure a dramatic improvement from all the rain and even the cloudy skies that lingered thereafter. But if we take a look at the circle scene tractor camera, you will see those blue skies and Keep in mind with the later sunset, we're going to stay warmer, at least figuratively speaking, warmer for longer throughout the evening. So that's always nice with that later sunset. We get just a little more time to enjoy the sunshine and the blue skies. We've got sunny skies ahead in the near term, colder nights ahead. Keep that in mind. And of course, the rain will inevitably return. Timing that coming up. As always, uh, feel free to reach out on Twitter and Facebook. I've got you, if you've got questions, I've got answers. I'm more than happy to help. So. Keep that in mind, full forecast is coming up. Trey? All right, thanks, Nick. Well, last night we adjusted our clocks for daylight saving time. Now the state fire marshal says it's also a good idea to check your smoke alarms. Mike Cheney says there have already been 29 fire deaths this year in Mississippi, and in 17 of those fires, the homes had no working smoke alarms. Cheney says if you can't afford to buy a smoke alarm, you can check with your local fire department to see if they may provide one for free. Because Lamar County schools are on spring break on March 11th through March 22nd, contractors on old Highway 11 in Oak Grove have scheduled an increase for crew activity. The contractor has also asked to work longer days while schools are closed. This may impact morning and afternoon commutes. Lamar County officials say one lane closures, delays and detours can be expected throughout the workday, but access to local businesses and residential areas will be available. Well, prom season is here and high schoolers across the Pine Belt are looking for the right thing to wear at the right price. For over 100 Pine Belt high school girls, finding the right dress was made a little easier today at Forest General Hospital's annual Promapalooza. Donations for the event began a few weeks ago. Over 500 dresses were collected and the girls were able to rent dress, shoes and accessories for just $12. Spirit Girls coordinator Macy Knight says the goal of the event is to make prom night one to remember and less of a financial burden. We continue doing it as long as we see a need for it. You know, if we have one girl that comes, if we have 100 girls that come, we will continue to do it um, until there's not a need for it, which prom dresses and prom in general is so expensive. Um, the experience, the dress, the flowers, everything with it. Um, so I can foresee that as long as we are having proms, we will have prom palooza. Knight says the Spirit Girls hope to collect even more dresses next year to help accommodate more diverse body types. In light of the ongoing IVF debate in Alabama, Mississippi lawmakers are now divided on legislation that would ensure that families can freely access the service. After the Alabama Supreme Court declared unborn embryos children, Mississippi Representative Missy McGee requested an amendment to House Bill 1688. The amendment would protect families' access to IVF and right to sue any parties limiting or restricting said access. In a statement Friday, Agricultural Commission, Commissioner Andy Gibson called the amendment unnecessary and claimed it would allow for backdoor abortion and po possibly cloning and selling of genetic materials of humans. 
Dr. Preston Perry with Positive Steps Fertility in Hattiesburg says the issue lies in education with people not fully understanding the complexities of the procedure. And actually a lot of the people who oppose it, they actually don't know what IVF really is. And when you talk to them about it, they're saying, oh, I didn't get that. And then they switch over to a more supportive side. Um, because again, as you talk about what is pro-life, creating circumstances where a child wouldn't exist and now it can after the use of technology, there's nothing more pro-life than that. Dr. Perry says, above all, lawmakers should keep women's health and well-being in mind when considering new legislation. IVF is currently legal in Mississippi. The amendment passed unanimously in the House Medicaid Committee and is expected to be brought to the full House vote by the March 14th deadline. Access to mental health services has long been a challenge for older Americans. And although Medicare's population has more than doubled over the past few decades, the number of mental health care providers has not. But a new expansion in coverage is looking to change that. For decades, Medicare has only covered mental health services provided by psychologists, psychiatrists, psychiatric nurses, and licensed clinical social workers. That group excluded about 40% of the country's mental health workforce, limiting the number of providers available to those who couldn't afford to pay out of pocket. Now Medicare is expanding its coverage, hoping to add 400,000 licensed mental health counselors and marriage and family therapists to the list of providers. Medicare will also increase reimbursement rates for some services. Folks on Medicare are usually um, on Social Security or they're uh, retired, so they have maybe less access to be able to pay for services out of pocket. The expansion comes amid a mental health crisis brought on by the pandemic. One in five older adults experience a variety of depression, anxiety, insomnia, substance abuse, or other mental health issues due to COVID-19, according to the National Council on Aging. Two U.S. National Guard members and Border Patrol agent that were killed in Friday's helicopter crash near the Texas border have been identified. Officials in New York said the two soldiers who died were Army National Guard members Casey Frankowski and John Gracia III. And the, Homeland, the Department of Homeland Security confirmed the Border Patrol agent that died was Chris Luna. The fourth New York Army National Guard soldier was injured in the crash, but there were no further details on their condition. Officials said the chopper had been assigned to a support mission at the southwest border and went down while conducting aviation operations. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. U.S. Central Command and the Royal Jordanian Air Force conducted the latest airdrop of humanitarian aid in Gaza today. CENTCOM said a U.S. C-130 dropped over 11,000 meal equivalents as well as other food including rice, flour, pasta and canned food into northern Gaza. Another aid dropped on Saturday saw over 41,000 U.S. meal equivalents and 23,000 bottles of water delivered to the area. CENTCOM said it, continues to pl it plans to continue to follow up on aerial deliveries. In an exclusive interview with MSNBC, President Biden said the Israeli Prime Minister's disregard for innocent lives is, quote, hurting Israel more than helping Israel. Here's what he had to say as far as the next steps in resolving the Israel-Hamas conflict. So I want to see a ceasefire. And I'm starting with a major, major exchange of prisoners for a six week period. We're going into Ramadan. It should be nothing happening. And we should build off of that ceasefire. And look, I've spoken with the majority of the Arab leaders from Saudi Arabia to Egypt to Jordan. They're all prepared to fully recognize Israel and begin to rebuild the region. And uh, that's, that's the focus. What comes after Gaza? What's next? It's a tough decision, but there's a lot that can be done. Mild days are in our future, but we are going to warm up and timing next week's rain coming up after the break.